You know, it would be, uh, you know, Larry's mentioning about the Holy Spirit coming down. I'm serious as a heart attack. Huh. I'd love to see it. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see, I'd love to see people opening their mouth and praising God because that's what this country needs. That's what this church needs. Amen. That's what we all need this morning is to have the Holy Spirit come in and, and uh, uh, touch our hearts. And uh, we want to go to the <coughs> book of Romans this morning. And we want to read a little bit there in chapter 12. And uh, this is a this is a, a lesson that uh, I, I've really enjoyed preparing, and I, I hope that you will uh, uh, get a blessing out of it. And I know you will because I'm going to read this word. But anyway, in verse one of chapter twelve of the book of Romans, the the scripture says, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren, or I beg you, uh, my brethren." by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. And this morning, uh, we, as God's people, know how this body is. And it is a temple, but it's still, it's something that's hard to control. And he would that, that we presented our bodies that way, uh, not saying you must, but he said it would be pleasing to him and the, to the church that he was writing to. And the more that we can do it uh, in honor of the Lord and, 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 and try to do it because it pleases him, the, the better off we are. And the Amen. more that uh, we can see things happen with our needs and with the needs of others, and, and we can come to church and enjoy the, uh, the services more than uh, if we're not using our bodies like we should. And so this morning he says here, he says it's, uh, it's holy and it's acceptable unto God. And he says it's your reasonable service. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he, he says that, uh, I mean, it's, it's hard sometimes. It's hard sometimes to... Uh, to control the flesh, but Amen. the thing of it is, it's it's like uh, learning to tie your shoe. Uh, I didn't I didn't learn to tie my shoe the first time I was showed up, put a pair of shoes on. But the more I practice, the better I could tie my shoe. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way with the human flesh, with anything that it tries to do. It gets better the more it does things. And so we need to this morning get it in our minds and our hearts that we want to serve the Lord in a greater way and and look at our look at ourselves as we look in the mirror. Listen, we can we can we can get closer to the Lord mm -hmm. and we can put some of these things behind us and we can get some blessings from the Lord that we've never got before. So he said here he says acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world. And this this word conformed is to become uh, not a model uh, to become uh, no uh, uh, not a model. Uh, uh, it's uh, I mean it is to become a model of of what is being transformed. And I, I thought about this as I was trying to study this. Uh, when we say transformed, and if you ever see a, a purse, a people out here pouring concrete, uh, and and the thing of it is they have to build forms. Mm -hmm. And listen, what they do, if you think about this, they pour that, and that's the same way with us this morning. Uh, when we get involved in this thing, we, we just take it a little bit at a time, and that, that concrete starts setting up, and then the first thing you know, here comes the finisher to finish it. Well, listen, when we get finished, when we get finished, and the devil is out there with a, with a trial, as long as my arm and he wants to finish you he wants to get you hardened to the study of God's word he wants to get you in love with the world and the things that are out there and so this morning uh, this conform is is uh, uh, it, it, I want to read this too it becomes into it, you can become into harmony with it and you adapt to uh, and submit to it and uh, so these are the things that 
uh, he's saying here, and be not conformed. And, and, and I want to read you something here in 1 Peter, if I can find it real quick. 1 Peter, I believe it is, 14, 4, 1. 1 Peter 4, 1. Uh, if you believe I put me some markers on my, on my Bible, I thought, well, that would help me some. I don't know if it's going to help me or not. 1 Peter 4 and verse 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Amen. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Mm -hmm. So that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walk in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, reviling, uh, banqueting, and, and abomination of idol, and idolatry. Now, there's another one in John I want you to look at and, and think on this John. John 3. Look at this. Uh, let me, let me make sure. John 2.15. 1 John 2.15. 1 John 2.15. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Amen. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Right. And this is what he's saying about being not conformed to this world. When you get conformed to something like that, you you take it take that on and you love it more than you do anything else. Mm -hmm. And listen, that's the that's our problem this day and time is that we have this world to deal with. And listen, it's it's even like the, the vaccinations that they're trying to give for these people uh, on this uh, virus thing. Listen, it's killing people, and they won't say nothing about that. But what they are doing is saying, hey. You can't work for me if you don't have the shot. And so they're putting these things on these people and they're conforming people. And the first thing you know, it's going to be something else because listen, uh, they, the, a lot of uh, people are con been conformed to this payday in the, in the mailbox. Mm -hmm. And now that the government's trying to cut it off, they're screaming in the holler and saying, hey, keep doing it, keep doing it. But listen, you don't need to keep get in these in these trick bags he says here in verse 16 for all that is of the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world Amen. and the world passeth away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of god abideth forever so little children i'm gonna read this here little children it is last time and as we have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last times. And Amen. I believe this morning with all my heart and soul this morning that we are living in the last days. And of course, we could have said that 15, 20 years ago. But the thing of it is, it's closer now than it's ever been. And, and uh, the, the screws has been tightened down on us and, and the devil is more on the rampage. And you know, uh, he's... Uh, he's, a, he's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour but Isaiah Isaiah in 53 I believe it is uh, he says cry aloud cry aloud and he said uh, tell the people about these things because listen it's, it's real people it's, it's real and we need to as, as God's people uh, grasp hold of this <coughs> in a way that we can understand that it is real if the time is at hand Amen. And it's real and so we as uh, God's people need to understand uh, what he's talking about why he's writing this to the church and telling them not to be conformed uh, to this world and then uh, back in our lesson in chapter and verse 2 he said but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and this transforming, I, I, I read it, and, and it's, it's, it's like conforming, but it's, it's to be changed, to be uh, become or be changed in, 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 a, in, a, in the right form, in the, in the form of, a, of Jesus. And I want to read something to you this morning in Ephesians 4, in verse 24. Ephesians 4, 24. Ephesians 4, 24. 
Just bear with me, we'll get there and I'll read it to you. All right. <clears throat> And that, and that ye put on the new man as being transformed, which after God is created in righteousness and truth and holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. And that's in, in, this, in this building here, in this church, we're members of one another. Amen. And listen, this morning we need to we need to understand that it's our duty to pray for one another. It's our duty to uh, help any of them, anybody that will ask you to help them. You help them, and especially the brother. And so this morning, this is some of the things that uh, that that you be changed when you get when they're transformed. But he says here, uh, listen, uh, in verse twenty six. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Mm -hmm. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the things which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. And so here, here's the plan that that Jesus set out, and and God and and. and and uh, Paul is writing to the church at, at Ephesus and saying, hey, these are the things that you should practice. These are the things that you should uh, uh, do. And, and this is a type of the transforming that he's talking about because he says, and, and, and he says, uh, but, ye, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? And so Amen. these are the things that are that you're that you're transformed to, and that is the renewing of your mind. Right. And and, and the love of God comes into your heart. So now I'm not saying it's a, it's a mind sal salvation, but but for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to. Amen. But to think soberly, accordingly, as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. And this morning, this thing here with uh, not thinking more highly of yourself, you know, there's there's so many there's so many people this morning that uh, they go to church and they read a few verses in the Bible and uh, they memorize them and they take them and use them for everything in the world. And they, they 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 put people down, though. and uh, that's that's not that's not what we should do. And you know, a, a little child in Christ is like a little bush out here in the woods. Listen, it can be bent easy, and when it's bent, it's it's hard for it to ever straighten up. And so you need you need to understand this morning, uh, even in. The, Brother Kenny's missions over there. I'm sure they're going to have people come in over there that are not learned. And uh, you, we, I mean, you know, that's that's a delicate little situation. And they come in here in this church, and new members are come in. Listen, we need to we need to, to be easy with them because uh, it's, it's 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 baby food for them first, mm -hmm. and then the meat later. And so this morning he's saying here. Uh, 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 to not to think of himself more highly than he ought to. Think not, but to think soberly according as God had dealt to every man uh, the measure of faith. Now, I want to turn back to Ephesians this morning again in the chapter 4, verse, verse 7, chapter 4. Oh, that's right. He says, but to every one, unto, unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he has ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? 
he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above us all heavens, that he might fill all things and give and give some uh, apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come into the unity Amen. and that's, that's the unity is bringing us together and letting us all be on one level even in a church you know when, when, when we've got people that have been raised up in church they raise and, and, and if there's not a, a lot of uh, new ones you're, you're pretty well on the level and he says here he says till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the son of God unto a perfect man unto the measures of that stat statue of the fullness of Christ and so this is what this is what being uh, humble towards those weak ones that are being fed on milk that's what has to happen is that they have to be strengthened with that milk until they can take meat. And he says, then he says, uh, then uh, uh, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statues of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine and the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. And so again, that is why that Paul is writing to the, to the church over there and saying, hey, uh, to not to think of yourself more highly because uh, I'm, I know, I'm sure that there's been uh, Sunday school teachers, there's been preachers, and there's been uh, just people that have caused a lot of problems with young kids and they've led them to that altar they they've told them hey all you have to do is say i believe and 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 they they bent that child and a lot of times people that child was never straightened up and so this is something this morning i think that we we need to think about very closely because uh, it's a serious it's a serious serious thing and so back in our lesson now in verse 4 for we as for as we have many members in one body and all members have the same office so we being many are one body in Christ and every one members of one another having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us whether prophecy let prophesy according to the proportion of faith so we see that in over in Ephesians 2 or ministering, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching. And then we we want to see here back what uh, uh, Paul said there in, in our lesson as we started. He said, I beg you, brethren, therefore by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Amen. And he says here, on ministering, let us wait on the ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth, or exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, that he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness, let love be without dissimulation or hypocrisy, abhorred that which is evil, cleave to that which is, which is, uh, which is taken. Hold on this minute. Sorry. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Amen. Not slowful in business or lazy, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. And so these are some of the things that Paul wrote in the church that they needed to do. And some of these are, are very hard to do mm -hmm. um, unless not to, you do it like you did I told you about the shoes trying. You've got, to, you've got to practice it. You've got to do it. And sometimes uh, having patience is the hardest thing in this world. And you'll think, Amen. well, uh, I, just, I just can't get by that thing. But the thing of it is, uh, you can. Because this body can be made to do whatever you want it in spiritually to do it can be because it can learn how to to uh, 
work an old typewriter, it can drive a car, it can do about anything that you want to. And listen, don't, I mean, the, 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 the excuse is I can't do it. Well, the excuse is I'm not trying hard enough. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, that's, 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 that's something that we need to think upon this morning. Now he says here in verse 14, bless them that which persecute you, bless and curse not. Now that's, that's an easy one to do too. Uh, bless them that slap you in the face and, and uh, hurt you in any way they can and make fun of you and, and all of these things. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. Because listen, the one that you the one that you pray for needs the prayer. Because if he's doing that to you, he needs them prayers. And the thing of it is, those prayers goes to Jesus, and Jesus presents them to God. And listen, they can do something about what you can't do, but just pray. Mm -hmm. and so uh, you got a you got a higher a higher place to go to that to get the job done, and you can do it yourself. So he says. Uh, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own concept. And Amen. So, again, here we're speaking of meekness, of, uh, of uh, trying to be a help to those that uh, are, are new in the in the Christian life, or have never been uh, even some have not been saved. Listen, uh, we need we need to try to uh, be uh, easy with them because uh, they don't know, they don't realize what the outcome of their life is. They don't realize that there is a hell. They don't realize that there is a heaven. Because listen, if they realized what hell was and what heaven was, I'm pretty sure that they would. But the thing of it is, they don't realize it, and so they will, it, it's hard for them to, to understand it. But you can be meek with them, you can be easy with them, and you can get a whole lot more done. Amen. Uh, you know, you can. You, I mean, you can catch a whole lot of fire, flies with sugar. That's what the old saying is. So uh, the thing of it is, you need to do, do it that way. Okay, now recompense no man evil. For evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men, and if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Right. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. And so here we see, uh, when we're trying to do good to those that are uh, mean to us and all this, the Lord says to us and, give, and, and and we can we can be assured of this of course uh you know i hate to see i hate to see things happen to people but listen when it does it's for their best feet it's, it's for them their best because listen the lord knows how to bring them down but he says here if it be possible as much as life in you live peaceably with all men dearly beloved avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is, is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Amen. And so here it is for your enemy. Uh, uh, you, give him, you give him what he needs, and then... It's up to him. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I, I'm, I'm saying it this way because he says, "Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him; and if he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his face, on his head." And this is something that 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 will show your meekness and show if he don't if he don't if he don't let it happen, help him. It'll show that uh, how how mean he is and. And the coals of fire, uh, I'm sure on his head is, is the uh, sickness or whatever that he'll have to put up with. But he says, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. So these are some of the things this morning that, uh, that I, you know, I, I think that uh, it's a blessing for me to read and it's a blessing for you to hear me read. And I think that it's, it's something that... <coughs> all practice a little bit more than what we do because uh, 
Uh, it's pleasing to the, it's pleasing to God. Uh, and, 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 and even in our in our lesson this morning, he says, uh, here, I beseech you there, uh, for brother, but by the mercies of God that you present your, li your body as a living sacrifice. And this is some of the things that the body can do to those that are out in the world that don't know the Lord or that's, that's away from the Lord or whatever. These are some of the things that we can, we can do with these bodies. And so we have them. We need to use them. Amen. Uh, uh, I wish I could use mine better than I do. But anyway, I thank the Lord for what I got. And uh, we ask you to pray for us and continue to uh, pray for each, each other because uh, that's that's where we get our strength. Mm -hmm. uh, you can pray for me and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll know something's going on because the Lord will bless me uh, even in trying to teach a Sunday school lesson. It, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it Sometimes it gets a little bit... Uh, uh, touchy with me because of, uh, of things that I can't uh, find. But anyway, thank the Lord for what I can do. And so, y'all have a good day and thank you for, for listening to me and uh, pray for